Good afternoon, Day of Pentecost Full Gospel Church. Thank you once again for joining us on this Sunday afternoon, the first one in November, where we turned our clocks back. And I hope everyone um, is uh, made the transition. Um, the hard part will be the transition when we go the other way in the spring. I wish they'd just leave the time alone. Um, that's my story on that part, and I'm going to stick with it, because it just messes with me. If it would stay on daylight saving time, I'd be all right, because getting dark at 4.30 and 5 o'clock is not my thing. But I don't make the decisions. But once again, thank you for being here with us. Either way, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and I am, and I'm hoping we all shall rejoice and be glad in it. Um, we just, the last song that we played, we played four songs today. The last one was a song by Mary Mary called The Church That I Grew Up In, and I was sitting yesterday um, and putting the final touches on my sermon and I was listening to the Bishop G.E. Patterson station on Pandora and they played this song and it just took me into the place I go when I get into, as I tell my sister, the zone, the holy and holy place the Holy of Holies, and I got to reflecting on some of the worship and some of the church worship services I had been in over the years, and, and I was, ooh, ooh, I was getting chills on thinking about some of the saints that I had known in the past and the anointings that I felt, and it was just like they were all coming together at the same time. And I posted it even on my Facebook page, I believe. If I didn't, I'm going to post it when I get home. But I want to share with you a scripture um, that is what part of, it's not a part of the synoptic gospel, but it is a part of the story that is very similar in the Gospel of John to um, what I'm going to be talking about because it's Jesus telling the disciples what they are supposed to do for one another. And he gives the example by washing their feet. So I want to look at the Gospel of John chapter 13 And I want to call your attention to verses 11 through 17. Verse 11 and following says, For he knew he should betray, he knew who should betray him. Therefore he said, said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet. He had taken his garment and was set down again. And he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye, you call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for I am. If ye then if, if then your Lord and Master have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example 
that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Now, I know that we have some um, friends that believe in foot washing worship services, and they follow that. And that's all right if that's what you want to do. But the object of this lesson was to teach believers that we are to serve one another no matter what our position in Amen. the church is. Amen. That was the whole lesson of the teaching. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords stooped down looking like a mere slave to serve his disciples.
Jesus. For our Samonic scripture this morning, I would like to call your attention to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22 verses 22 through verse 32. And while you're making your way there, I want to share with you that um, next Sunday and following, I will be zooming in on location in Charlottesville, Virginia. And I'll probably be there um, in uh, for about a, until the middle of December, right before Christmas. And uh, so, that's not me. <laughs> I, was looking, I was looking up at the screen. <laughs> that's my sister. There I am. Yeah. But anyway, I'll be down there um, 
dealing with uh, stem cell plant cells. A stem cell transplant, as some of you know. And God's got this. Um, everything's going to be all right. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. And so I just want to share that with you. And uh, I am not worried about it, so I will zoom in. There will be some days that when I, if I feel up to it, I will be preaching from Charlottesville. We've already worked out a plan in the Sundays that I have, and I'll zoom in, and Minister Tammy will be preaching. So we'll probably be doing some tag teaming. Uh, second Sunday, which is next Sunday, will be her Sunday to preach anyway. And uh, so that won't change. All right? So, the following Sunday, we're debating whether or not we're still going to go to Colonial Beach in representation of you. Okay. Uh, for their Thanksgiving service. For their Thanksgiving service, yeah. So you, we're, we're debating. Okay. Because I was still, um, I was supposed to be the speaker for Thanksgiving service yes. in Colonial Beach. And instead of me preaching, Brother Lanzant Wright will be preaching in Colonial Beach. Um, for the Thanksgiving service at uh, River of Life we, Church. We want to still represent you. Right. Oh, that'll, I will really appreciate that. And I found out for the first Sunday in the year, 2023, guess who will be preaching in Colonial Beach? Who? Yours truly. Oh. Ah. <laughs> so we'll be there for that too. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I love it when a plan comes together. All right. So, as I was saying, our scriptures, so now we've, we've had our announcements for the morning. We've covered that as well. Um, so, I'm going to share with you our scripture for the sermon, the sermonic scripture, coming from Luke chapter 2, verse 22 through 32. Yeah, the Lord have mercy. I started reading the last verse and said the last shall be first. No, the, the first shall be first and the last shall be last in this case. Okay. So, chapter 22, verse 22, reading 2, verse 32. Amen. All right. And truly, the Son of Man goeth as it was determined, but woe unto the man by whom he is betrayed. Now remember I read to you um, the scripture from the Gospel of John. And they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. And there was also strife among them which of them should be accounted the greatest? And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. Now keep this in mind, because... This is good instruction for the church. Now, I'm talking about churches. All right? So we have power struggles. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Leave that alone. Mm. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief, as he that doth, what? Serve. Come on. Come on. Amen. For whether is the, whether is greater, he that sitteth at me, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at me, but I am among you, 
as he that serveth. Ye are, ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father have appointed unto me. That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. Amen. And sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And the Lord said to Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith shall not fail. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Amen. Come on. Oh. Now I got to share with you some, some things. First of all, my topic is, and you might wonder now, where is this coming from? How does this relate? I'm going to emphasize the last two verses. So I'm going to read that again. Go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. These words Jesus said to Simon. Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Mm. And my grandmother had a sifter. My mother had a sifter. And you turned that crank and that thing went around and just ground it up so anything that was lost would be ground so fine it was like powder. Then he goes on to say, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. Amen. My topic, is that the best you can do? Now, that's a question directed at somebody. I want you to think about that. My topic is directed at somebody. Now, it's no secret that many of us have faced major challenges this year. Amen. Now, I'm going to, uh, oh, mm, oh, I'm going to back up a little bit. Go ahead, Pastor. As my sister and I would sometimes say, this up. Many of us have faced major challenges over the last three and a half, four years. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about, and I don't have to go and state anything specifically. There have been job challenges, family challenges, relationship challenges, health challenges, emotional challenges, grief challenges, and even some, there have been faith challenges. Amen. Come on. Amen. Oh, go ahead, Pastor. Ah! Go ahead. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. Challenges, challenges, challenges. Challenges on the right, challenges on the left. Ooh. It seemed as though the devil opened up his bags of tricks and dumped everything out of them on our heads. Yeah. Come on. Not only that, and it didn't smell pretty either. No, no. Come on. Pray the on. worst thing thing an enemy can do is back you in a corner. Oh, right. Now, now, let me give you a little sidebar here. Now, I grew up in the city. Now, I know around here, you know, 
in every place in the world, and they came over their, their um, classic scientific name is Norwegius ratus, something like that, okay? Our common name is rat, okay? Now, having spent my many days growing up in the city, I've seen some city rats. <laughs> All right? And they estimate that for every person living in a city, there is at least one rat per person. So you figure, look at the population of any major city's population. And you can count that city as having that many rats within the city limits. Now, I think New York at one time, I don't know what the population of New York City is now, but I remember one time when New York City had about eight or nine million people. So you do the math, eight or nine million people in a city, that's eight or nine million rats. The population of Chicago, same thing. Population of Los Angeles, population of Atlanta, population, you know, I don't want to think I'm just picking on cities in the north, I'm going south too. Population of New Orleans, population of Atlanta, population of Selma, you know, I can look across the south. Houston, any of them cities, any city in the US, I'm talking inside the city limits. Now, city rats tend to be larger than country rats. Amen. All right? Now, when I drove buses in D.C., I've seen city rats that are the bodies this long and that fat. Now, ain't no black snake Go eat that. And ain't too many cats gonna, gonna win too many fights. It's gonna be a draw. All right? And the tails are usually as long as the bodies. Now, I've seen subway rats. And they just about as big. And sometimes when you're riding the subway, and I've had the privilege of riding in the front car and the rat don't make it across the track, yeah. you can hear the thump. And it sounds almost like it's run over a person. Okay. Now, that's just how, how bad it is. So, when something like that comes at you, you know, and you figure, you know, they scavenge on waste. You know, and they're dangerous. They carry disease. And so when you think about what the enemy is throwing at you, he's trying to bring anything like that. You know, anything that's going to bring you down. All right? That's his main goal. Okay? So... The way, there are ways that you can keep that at a minimum. You know, and everybody knows there are things that you should do. Keep your counters clean and keep your trash dumped and your trash cans sealed and make sure, you know, you pick your trash up in the yards and stuff <laughs> so that, you know, those kinds of things don't come around. So one, one of the things that I remember is that you have to be on guard against the things that could come against you. Mm, go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. Where are you going? Go ahead. Now, <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things that uh, Satan's going to try to do is he's going to look for your weak points. Amen. Like I said, you know, we've all been going through things. And everybody 
in this congregation lost somebody within the last few years. Every one of us has lost one or both parents. That's a challenge. Talking about challenging your faith, that will do it. Every one of us in here. You talking about even how grown folk who are very independent, talking about feeling abandonment issues when you don't have that parent that you used to call every day. Preach it, Pastor. Just to chat with is now gone, and you wake up and think, oh, let me call mama. Oh, let me call dad. I can't call them anymore. They're not here. Or you got questions about things. You say, I wonder what so-and-so used to do. But oh, daddy would know. No, I can't call daddy anymore. Or I wonder how mama used to fix this recipe. Oh, she's gone. I wonder how grandma fixed that gingerbread. Oh, I'll never know because I can't ask her. I wonder how auntie fixed those pearl. Oh, I can't call her anymore. She's gone. I wonder how Grandma Graham did that deep dish cobbler and never used the rest. Oh, I can't call her. She's gone. And the, I don't care how long they've been gone. You still got some issues you got to work through. Amen. It's just something you learn how to work through and live through with the help of Jesus. Amen. And sometimes if... if if the devil can't get you one way, he tries to come at you another way. Amen. I saw a movie way back a long time ago that really is not a movie for the saints of the Most High. But this movie was on television and it took place in the 1920s. And in the movie, uh, Della Reese played the part of a madam in a house of prostitution and on the first floor Eddie Murphy played the part of the person running the gambling casino and Red Fox played the person who uh, worked one of the gambling casino the, the, uh, the, the tables in the gambling casino and he wore these very thick glasses and this was in the 1920s during prohibition and speakeasies and at the end of the day they were counting up the day's take and they got into an argument about the the money and how the money wasn't right and so who was had stolen the money and Della Reese uh, was upset because the character that Eddie Murphy was playing was thinking she had stolen the money and she invited him outside and uh, she had her fists up in the air, and he's laughing at her, and she, she punched him in the face, and he stopped laughing, and he hit her in the stomach, and he doubled, she doubled over, and she said, oh, now that's what I'm talking about. And when she come up, and she said, is that the best you can do? Amen. Now, it's funny how God uses sometimes worldly things to take you to a spiritual level. And I was walking through the house, and all of a sudden, I could just get that picture of that phrase, and her doubled over like this and coming up saying, oh, is that the best you can do? And the Lord took me from that into telling the devil, oh, is that the best you Amen. can do? Oh, and the Lord said, that's your sermon topic. Is that the best you can do? And then the Lord reminded me of some things. That once you make up your mind, and this was around about 5 o'clock in the evening, or 5 o'clock in the morning, that this came to me, and he quickly brought back to mind some things that he had said. He brought to mind, first of all, what happened at the Passover feast. 
where the disciples, at this spiritual moment, the last Passover he would eat with them before he would go to the cross. And here they were, the spirit there. And the Lord's giving them final instructions. Judas has already left the room. The devil has already gone out. He's already been told, what you do, go do it quickly. And so now, they're sitting there, and Jesus begins to impart spiritual wisdom. But you know, some folks don't get it and have to have it shown to them. So they begin to have, I'm going to call it church arguments. You know, church arguments. Who's going to be in control of what when they get in heaven? Who's going to be sitting close to Jesus? Who's going to be large in charge of this? Well, you know, I'm the oldest, and you know, I was the, I was the first picked. I can see here, I got seniority. Have you been in churches like that? You know, my family was here long before yours. Well, you know, my grandmama bought that pew right there. You know, my daddy was a deacon for 44 years. And how can you tell me anything? You know, I know my job. Oh, don't tell me. My grandmama did this. My grandfather did that. And you can't tell me nothing. Jesus got up took his robe and wrapped it around his waist while they were arguing and just got down and started washing their feet. The church needs to understand that it's not about who's going to be large and in charge. It's not about who's going to be sitting in the primary chair at the table. You know, in every church that I've been in, I've done everything from putting line in church outhouses to sweeping the floors to putting food on the tables at homecomings to baking food for homecomings. I've done everything from scrubbing toilets to vacuum in church floors with my own vacuum cleaner. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor. And somebody come in and say, where's the pastor? He's scrubbing the toilet. He's doing what? And he's the pastor? Yeah. He doesn't mind being a servant. I think that's terrible. And I come out and I say, give me a minute. Let me dry my hands. Oh. What can I do for you? Well, uh, I'd love for you to come and preach for me. Sure. When do you want me to preach? I said, forgive the fact that I'm uh, not looking very pastoral, but yes, I am the pastor here. Oh, I've never seen a pasta scrub the toilets. I said, but you know what? God called me to be an example of servanthood. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead, go ahead. Yes. How is anybody going to learn to serve if you don't That's teach them? Right. Amen. Come on. Kids learn in this classroom by the teacher giving an example on the board and talking them through. This is how you do it. You talk them through the process and then walk around as they're doing it and say, now this is how it's done. That's what good teachers do. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you decide to be sold out for Jesus, those things become a major part of your life. When the church understands that our number one priority is not to be, not who is large and in charge of what or who has what job to build, but to build each other up in the Lord and to draw others to Jesus, then we will see an increase in anointing and power and not before. 
We need to decide, decide that we are going to be sold out for Jesus. And even if it means you're going to be a major target of the devil. And trust me, you will be. Because once you become... Once you become one that's sold out for Jesus, he's going to do everything he can to take you down and cut you off at the knees. But you know, when you cut me off at the knees, I know how to scrub floors on my knees too. Amen. Amen. I found that out. I got up in the middle of the night one night and I was reminded of several things. A few years ago, I had just taken a long swim. And when I got home from that long swim, I felt a pain in my chest and I uh, went to the hospital and I drove myself. And then a friend of mine came and uh, got my car back to the house. And uh, later on, my son brought some things up that I needed. And in the middle of that night, about 3 o'clock in the morning, the Lord woke me up and reminded me of several things. He told me that night, take your second win. A bishop called and reminded me then, what are you going to do about the name of that church that the Lord gave you? Then I got a confirmation the next morning from a friend of mine in California. What are you going to do about the name of that church that the Lord gave you? And then two nights ago, the Lord woke me up again and reminded me of four things. Take your second wind. And then he reminded me of something he told me when I got this sucker punch in my stomach back in January. When the doctor told me, multiple myeloma. And I said, not acceptable. And he looked at me like I'd lost my mind. And I said, you heard me. I said, not acceptable. It took me two days to tell my sister and my children. And when I told them, that night the Lord woke me up and told me three other things. He reminded me, take your second win. And then he said, you shall live and not die. I have plans for you. Amen. Amen. I have work for you. Now y'all know here. We just started this church a few months after that, or before that. And so every day I wake up, I'm defying with the blood of Jesus everything that the devil is hitting me with. And I say, is this the best that you can do? And I say to that thing, you don't belong to me. That's right. Amen. I say to what the doctor told me I had, you don't belong to me. So it can go back to the pit of hell from whence it came. You are trespassing in the territory Amen. of a blood-bought child of God. Now get out! In the name of Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb. To haters, gossipers, negativity, depression, anxiety, any addictions, who or whatever it is, 
you should say this or this is the is this the best you can do we're done with you Amen. get out we take authority over you in the name of Jesus to the stuff in the world you better pack up a lunch because when you come at us, we're just getting started. Come on, baby. Is that the best you can do? You better give it your best shot because when I come up, you got another one coming because I'm coming up again. I've got my second win. And when I go down, a piece of you is going to the pit of hell, and I'll get up again, and I'm going to dance on top of you. Amen. Now, what you got to say, because that's my story. Yeah, that's my story. And I'm sure enough sticking to it. Amen. Is that, is that, is that the best you can do? Because I've got the victory. Oh, i got one more thing to tell you. Because the Lord showed me something. Because you ever seen those, those samurai movies? Because when I come up, I come up fighting Holy Ghost Karate. Hallelujah! The Lord showed me in a vision one time, he was slinging banners. One was dipped in the water which symbolized the spirit. And the other was dipped in the blood of Jesus. Oh, glory. And he couldn't come at me because I was twirling them. And the more he twirled, splatters were going out. Oh, hey! Yeah. Woo! Jesus! Jesus! Woo! Give it your best shot. Is that the best you can do? Come on! Come on, I got you. Woo! Ah, thank you. Glory! Now that's my story. You can call me a Holy Ghost Samurai if you want. Because I am sticking to it. Father, in the name of Jesus, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, you are my strength. And you are my redeemer. You are my healer. You are my battle axe. You are my shelter in the time of storm. Lord, I thank you for the victorious outcomes for all of us in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. We pray. Amen.